Here we go. All right, so we got some pretty interesting things going on here. Uh, the French military wants to pull out equipment from Niger, Africa. Um, but they want to leave a contingency force in Niger, Africa. Now, here's what's wild. Um, in this video, we're also going to be talking about how Nigeria might have a fake president right now. <laughs> like, I am so ready to move on from this topic, but it just, every single time I look up the news and I'm just like, hey, let me just see what's going on. Nigeria, again, the president might be fake. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining. Also, Ecowas is saying, hey, just so everyone knows, if Niger doesn't stop with the junta, we're still going to war, people. Like, we never said there's, like, we're, we're all down for peace and negotiations, but we're still ready for conflict. And so we're going to play a clip showing all that. And so I think uh, there, was, there was a lot of misleading information that it's all about peace and we're going to have transition. Eagle is like, no. Yeah, peace is good, but you're not going to make us wait forever. Like, we want the president back that's being held hostage immediately. So, this never ends. Let's go ahead and look into this real quick. Um, this is from France 24. Let me move this for you. There you go. We're doing this live, and then I post this for you guys. Uh, fewer drones, aerial assets. France plans reduction of military presence in Niger. Okay, the source told France 24 that France is pre preparing to withdraw most of its drones and aerial reconnaissance assets from Niger while maintaining an autonomous force in the country. Hmm, sounds like something the United States was planning on doing in another nation, but that's for another video. Again, for those of you who are not aware, drone assets are a massive part of operations within Niger, not only for France, but the United States. Again, and I will keep saying this every time we talk about this topic, United States Keep your mouth shut. It's working. Just don't talk. No one even knows you're there. Everyone forgot you're there. Just keep your mouth shut, United States. You're doing the right thing, finally. <laughs> uh, the French army was there in Niger to carry out anti-terror operations. As this is no longer the case, some of our resources are no longer needed. So we're going to be streamlining, said the source, adding the, cap the capacity to carry out attacks and defensive maneuvers autonomously. So again, France still wants the ability to operate within Niger, just not fully in case they need to send in more troops. Because again, there is still economic ties and there still is a partnership with the country. So France doesn't want to completely leave them behind. Again, that would also look really bad for France. Um, around 1,500 French troops are currently deployed at three bases in Niger as part of France's wider fight against militant groups. You can't say that word on here. Uh, the plans for a reduction force come as French officials hold talks with Niger's regular army officers, with whom Paris has long cooperated, according to French daily Le Monde. Talks are not being held with the leaders of Niger, which is kind of odd. It's being held with the military, uh, the military leaders, but not like the head-head guys, so... Maybe this is France's way of trying to work with the people again they've always been friends with. Anyway, that's sort of what's going on. I don't want to keep speculating into this because I think the bigger story is this right here. So this is the head of ECOWAS. I'm not even going to attempt to say that name. Abdel Fatou Moussa. Please leave a comment and let me know if I totally butchered that. Abdel Fatou Moussa the ECOWAS Commissioner for Political Affairs. So this is the guy who represents ECOWAS, the collection of African states, who are trying to work together and have all agreed that there will be no more coups. And then what happens? Niger has a coup. <laughs> okay, so this is very interesting because what you're about to see in here is that ECOWAS, again, is like, yo, we still want a military intervention again. I'm going to keep reiterating this. If you don't hand over the president and do this turn of power. Hey, $10 donation. Eric Mason, thank you again. Uh, given the junta has U.S. training, do you think they value counterterror operations? Yes, they do. Uh, even the ones by U.S. and France. Yes, Eric, of course. And they've even said um, 
they do appreciate, especially the United States, the thing that they have an issue with France is that they have a little too much control on the economic power of Niger. And what I mean by that is um, the selling of uranium, political stuff, like the president who's currently in Niger, a lot of people say that's just a French puppet, etc. But nonetheless, yes, uh, they do respect it. And that's one of the biggest reasons why they like international powers in Niger to help protect the country. So let's go ahead and play this clip. So let me ask you a very straightforward question. Nigeria's president, Ahmed Bola Tinubu, has floated the idea of a nine-month transition in Niger. Niger's prime minister also told the media uh, that there are discussions with ECOWAS to uh, find such a reasonable uh, transition. So are there hopes of reaching an, ag an agreement on such a transition? You know, thank you, Mark, for having me. Uh, first, let me debunk uh, the idea that uh, President uh, Ahmed Bola Tinubu uh, has floated the idea of nine months. Just again, real quick, for quick context, at the time of making this video, the man that he is referencing is the president of Nigeria. And just so you know, right now, he might not even be the legitimate president of Nigeria. We will get into that. But understand this, right now... Uh, the cracks are showing for ECOWAS where a guy is making statements who might not even be a legitimate world leader. So keep that in mind as you watch this clip. Uh, the chair of the ECOWAS authority, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has not proposed any time frame for the transition. The position of ECOWAS remains the same. The release of President Mohamed Bazoum you know, from his hostage situation and the immediate uh, the restoration of constitutional order. That is the position of ECOWAS. Uh, yeah, the Prime Minister, uh, uh, Mohammed Zain, uh, has also, uh, you know, indicated, you know, his, uh, the, the uh, willingness of the military regime in Niger uh, to negotiate with... Uh, you know, equals on a transition. The boy is very much in their court. We are just waiting. Uh, you know, I think we have not moved from our position. That is the release of President Bazoum and the uh, restoration of constitutional order without any further delay. So again, um, even as I've been reporting on this and doing research, there's been so many random interpretations as to what ECOWAS is saying or not saying. So it's this is the confirmation. This is the guy representing ECOWAS. We want Mohamed Bazoum back in power. Like, that's what we want. So uh, what you're saying uh, is that there can be no transition like we've seen in Mali, Burkina Faso, and Guinea in Niger. You want the military to hand back power to uh, Mohamed Bazoum. That's it. Uh, yes, we are not going to repeat the experiences of uh, Mali, Guinea, and Burkina Faso. And again, I don't want to keep cutting this off, but again, keep in mind, ECOWAS had all agreed we are no longer going to fall apart. No more coups. And this is what they are um, referring to, just so you guys have a point of reference. That's why they are name uh, dropping these countries. Where ECOWAS found itself uh, actually in a, a trade-off with uh, the military regimes, haggling over the duration and as we speak, uh, some of them are still thinking of unilaterally even extending the transitions in their countries. The authority of heads of state, of ECOWAS, have decided that enough is enough. We are not going to use what happened in uh, Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso as a template for Niger. We are drawing the line in the sand, and we want the immediate restoration of constitutional order and the release of President Bazoum. Those are our uh, uh, your position. You know, so the modalities for the restoration of that constitutional order will form the content of any discussion with the authorities. But this is our, uh, our position, and it is up to them to respond to it. So far, they have not responded. And uh, So there you go. Okay, I don't want to drag this on. You get the point. They mean business. And they go on in, in the conversation to further say it. 
we don't want military intervention, but military intervention is what is going to happen. And we're not going to wait here and do this whole three-year plan. Niger was pitching that we're going to do a three-year transitional plan. And ECOWAS is like, how are we going to wait three years for this to happen? Three years is a long time to transition to a total new power. I don't think so. I mean, consider how much has happened within just a month or so. Now, this also is the big story. And I think this is, let me try to move this over for y'all. Nigerian election tribunal rejects challenge to Tinubu's presidential win. Um, so the head of Nigeria might not be legit. And that is something I did not see happening. I'm going to be honest with you. This was not in my bingo. My bingo cards here. Hold on. Let's play this clip to give us a little clarification on what's going on. Because this is a little confusing because this changes the game. Because if this happens... Now we have another country in ECOWAS who's supposed to be a powerhouse that could create some turmoil and really throw off ECOWAS because these are the guys who have a massive military. They are probably the bigger superpower in ECOWAS. His very position as state head is in jeopardy back home. A Nigerian appeals court is set to rule on the opposition's move to overturn President Bola Tinubu's recent election victory. The five-judge Ambuja court has been deliberating on a bunch of lawsuits from the opposition, and this has been happening since a number of months. The opposition PDP and Labour parties are calling for the results of the February election to be nullified. They are further calling for their candidates to be declared the winner of the court to order a rerun of the voting. Former Lagos Governor Tinubu won 37% of the votes in the February 25th vote. However, any decision made by the appeals court is unlikely to be the final stage of this drama because both parties can appeal to the Supreme Court for a final verdict. Election results have repeatedly been challenged in Nigeria. However, no court has overturned a presidential vote since Nigeria returned to democracy from military rule in 1999. Okay, so there you go. That's going to be a that's a whole nother video right there. But I just wanted to give you a little insight that things are stirring up a little bit in ECOWAS. Um, it looks like the French, they are going to do the peaceful thing to pull out of Niger, Africa. Equipment, not all of their troops, equipment, which I think is fair. I do think they should be allowed to leave troops as long as they don't have any say in anything. And they continue the mission of counter-terror. However, um, ECOWAS... I do hope they stick with the peaceful transition. I do hope that Niger uh, doesn't want military intervention and they try to work something out. Niger is sticking with, we don't want that president. France is sticking with, we want that president. ECOWAS is sticking with, we want that president. And then all of a sudden, Nigeria is like, we might not even have a president. <laughs> anyway. Um, I'm going to leave it at that because this video is going to get way too long. It's going to get way too complex and we can just figure it out from here. So thank you so much for being here, everybody. I hope you guys learned something and I hope you're starting to see things are getting, we're going into a new direction with this entire thing where country after country and ECOWAS could unfortunately start to fall apart, which is not a good thing. We don't want that, but that it's like that's happening right in front of our eyes. We can't negate that. So Please, everybody, do me the biggest favor ever because this helps out a lot and it helps me to continue to do these live streams. And it's free. I'm going to post this video. If you are watching live, you already know the deal. I'm going to post this video. Please comment on the posted video and I can comment back and read the rest of your comments. So I'm about to post this live stream. Please comment on the posted video. It helps boost the channel, boost the video. It helps out a ton. I don't have any sponsors. You guys are the sponsor. I love all of you guys. Thank you for being here. I love doing this for you guys. And I hope you learned something. We'll see you later.